So you'd like to do something in Chautauqua County, would you? Okay, let me take you through the, the maze that you're going to have to travel. Uh, realize that there are a number of hopes and dreams that have been created by communities and they may be reflected in rules and regulations that are within the communities. So the first thing that you have to understand about what it is that you want to create is that you've got to un understand how it relates to what is going to support it. Are you interested in a home? Are you interested in a farm? Are you interested in creating a commercial development or just a single store? Are you interested in an industrial development, a golf course, another ski slope in Chautauqua County? All of these run into a basket full of uh, material that you have to paw through in order to bring your idea to fruition. But you should come to whatever level of government you're going to start with knowing that what you can do has an economic justification for it. If you are going to create a specialty peanut store, you must understand whether or not there truly is a specialty nut store opportunity in Chautauqua County. Is the population concentration big enough? If you're going to create something dynamic like a, another year-round resort, who is the public from which you are going to draw? And is there enough of that size of public uh, to support what you want to do? Uh, we have seen in Cattaraugus and Chautauqua County all winter recreational areas and all summer recreational areas have had some form of a subsidy to them, either through a bankruptcy or through a farmer's home loan through a loan default or special uh, subsidy of interest. Uh, as an example, when I first came to Chautauqua County, Paul Norton, who lived at Chautauqua, uh, was going around and encouraging people to create business ventures. And he had a resource of capital where he could give people money at well below market costs at that particular time. Uh, these are the things that you've got to come with equipped on your own to begin with. You can't come in and say, I want to create a Frost Romani, and then say to the Industrial Development Agency, uh, is it economically feasible that this particular facility be built here? Uh, you come to the Industrial Development Agency and you say, I'm going to build this type of facility, here's, here's my market capability, uh, this is what I need in the way of loans or, or loans and grants, whatever the case may be. But let's start through the maze. It should start in the municipal jurisdiction in, in which you think the facility or the thing would be feasible. Now, if you have no sense of where it would be feasible, uh, that's another challenge. Uh, I think that there's only one more ski slope in the county that really is attractive, but it's got so many environmental impairments that it'll never happen. Uh, I think that there are, are possibly no more room for general merchandising stores for a while. We've had such a growth in the last five years, we've added, depending upon how you apply the numbers and use the term, general merchandising store. Is a, is a Sam store a general merchandising store? Uh, is is a, a Wegmans a general merchandising store when you really see the, the, the broad spectrum of things that are on sale there as opposed to a Kmart? Uh, but we've had somewhere between 500 and 700,000 square feet of additional retail general merchandising uh, floor space added to Chautauqua County during a period of, of, for all practical purposes, no population growth. Let that sink in for a moment. So we'll assume that you have come and you understand your market and you know where you want to locate. You want to locate in this particular place because of uh, traffic volumes or you want to locate in this particular place because it's got the soils that uh, support your golf course uh, better than any other place in the county and it's got the topography that makes the golfing 
afternoon or all day uh, exciting, and you want to locate it. You go first to either the village clerk or the town clerk in which the site is located. And the first thing you'll ask them are, one, do you have a zoning ordinance? May I see it? And you check to see whether or not the use that you would like to locate at a particular spot is allowable in that spot. There are some townships in Chautauqua County still without zoning, however. So if you hit those, uh, uh, you, you don't need that. But the village clerk will, or the town clerk will tell you readily that there is no zoning, so you don't have to deal with that. The next thing you, you have to look at is uh, if it's a residential development, do you have subdivision regulations? Um, how do I connect to your water and sewer system, if it happens to be whatever you're dealing with? Are you going to create your own water system or your own sewer system? And then depending upon how that water or sewer system is to serve either you or the public, uh, you may have uh, another immediate stop that you have to make, which would be at the county health department, uh, to find out if it's an individual sewer system and water system, uh, what you're going to have to do, as opposed to hooking into the municipal system. Seems very simple, doesn't it? Well, I wish it were that simple. It just so happens that, uh, let's assume for the uh, discussion purposes that uh, we're dealing with an activity uh, that is going to be on a municipal water and a municipal sewer system. Uh, it's going to cover very little ground. Then the only place that you have to deal with in terms of building permits and construction permits are with that particular municipal government. However, if you are going to build a smokestack industry that is going to have uh, wastes, now you're going to have to go to the, either the county health department or to the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation in order to get your permit. But you can start your search with your town government. When you get through with your town government, I would suggest that the next place that you can go look is the Chautauqua County Department of Planning. They have a checklist. It's two pages long, eight and a half by 11, which you can go through very rapidly, check off the things that you may or may not have to do. Uh, depending upon the amount of land that you're going to use and whether or not it is in uh, an agricultural district, you may have to do some additional work with the county planning department as to whether or not you have an environmental impact statement necessary for that process. The lead agency, of course, would be your, the local government. Uh, but it, there are a number of thresholds that you go through as to whether or not you have to be involved with an environmental impact statement. Uh, it's really not that complex. If you get to the right places to begin with to get the the data that you need. However, at the planning department, there are two sets of maps that you want definitely to look at. I'm sorry, three sets of maps. You want to look at the federal floodplain maps, the federal wetland maps, and the state wetland maps. And if you are encompassed by any of these three definitions, uh, you may have some additional things that you're going to have to deal with. In uh, the instance of the federal floodplain map, there is specific criteria as to what you may do in the federal floodplain, as was the case with the federal wetlands and with the uh, state wetlands. Very few instances do you escape from these rules and regulations. The federal wetlands are controlled out of the Corps of Engineers office, depending upon what part of the county you are in. You may have to go to the Buffalo office or to the Pittsburgh office, depending upon watershed. In terms of federal floodplains, again, uh, you're going to have to deal with the particular uh, Corps of Engineers office. In terms of uh, state wetlands, the state wetlands are in, administered by by the Environmental Protection Agency. 
If you are going to exhaust any gases to the air, you're going to have to meet uh, with the Department of Environmental Conservation. So you can make those two calls jointly. Now, assuming that we do not have to change because of the size of your development or whatever it is, we do not have to respond to the Environmental uh, Impact Act. We do not have to respond to the Wetlands Acts or the Floodplain Acts. Most all of your activity can take place within the jurisdiction uh, that you are dealing with. Now, you say, but whatever it is that I'm going to do, I'm going to need some financial assistance. Depending upon where you are in the county, you go to the Chautauqua County Industrial Development Agency, if it's industrial development, or you go to the uh, Dunkirk Industrial Development Agency. Uh, these two agencies have the ability to access long-term low-interest funds. They also have the ability to point you to other funding sources that might be available. It wasn't too many years ago that through the Economic Development Agency and the Farmers Home Administration and the Department of Housing and Urban Development that we had a cash flow that was a loan agent opportunity that was absolutely amazing. Uh, these things have been severely restricted in the last year and a half or two years. And the ramification of what you want to do and how you want to do it changes. And in most instances, the industrial development agencies can only now deal with industrial development and their opportunity for loaning funds or helping you secure grants depends on the, the, the type or the number of jobs you're going to create. Uh, there is still apparently some opportunity in urban areas. We have two entitlement cities the city of Dunkirk and the city of Jamestown that receive on an entitlement basis, a non-competitive basis, certain types of funds to help renew and undergird the economy of both of those cities. But I would have assumed that if you had started and you were dealing with the city of Jamestown to begin with, you would stay right in the clerk's office and she'd send you over to the Department of Planning, uh, Development uh, for the city of Jamestown immediately. So it doesn't, it, it doesn't get too complex unless you want to get into trying to change existing rules and regulations. Now when you want to change a zoning district to allow your use to take place, it immediately pops up onto the screen for an environmental impact statement. You immediately have to go through the whole screening of the water of, of the, the wetlands acts and the floodplain acts. Uh, so it depends upon what you're going to do and how it pops up and, and how many changes you're going to have to ask the local government to make uh, to allow your happening to take place. As an example, let's, let's move to Community X and we decide we need 25 acres for the industrial plant that we're going to want to locate in that community. We, we don't need an awful lot of water and we don't need an awful lot of sewage because it's not used in our manufacturing process. Uh, I have not talked all about any of the licensing requirements in the state of New York or business uh, programs. I'm talking about what you're going to have to do here on, on the local scene. Uh, 25 acres, it's going to take a change in the zoning ordinance. We're going to have to amend the district 25 acres is taking you through the threshold. There's going to have to be an environmental impact statement done. The municipality is going to be the lead agency. The lead agency is going to say it's going to cost us this much. You are going to have to pay the cost of the, the, the process. That, those two things are going to take specific public notice, public publishing in the newspaper, a waiting period, and a public hearing. Sometimes you can do them jointly. After the public hearing, the municipality's government will decide whether or not they will change the district boundaries to accept what you would like to, to have created. I would suggest to you that you want to understand their basic feeling about it long before you get to the to the public notice and the public hearing process. 
because it, it very well may be that uh, some people in the community will begin to campaign against whatever it is that you are, are talking about. There are an awful lot of people that, don't, that are afraid of change and they don't want their community changed and at the drop of a, any suggestion of change, uh, certain people immediately come out to, to, to fight whatever change might take place. But basically you can start with the village or town clerk. And the village and town clerk can either give you guidance uh, about what's within their township, or the, you can immediately walk up to the Chautauqua County Department of Planning and Development, or the city of Dunkirk or the city of Jamestown's development agencies, and get as much first-hand guidance as you can. Realize that we have a complexity of governments here in Chautauqua County. We have 27 villages, I'm sorry, 15 villages, 27 towns, two cities, and 19 school districts and 140 some odd other special districts that provide special services, such as a park district, such as a garbage collection district, such as a lighting district, um, those type of activities that do not take the, the total uh, municipal boundaries to provide the service, and therefore the people in a, in a very specific area are taxed for that, that particular type of activity. Uh, it is complex uh, if you want to make it so, uh, however, if you go and pick up the checklist at the Chautauqua County Department of Planning, you basically will miss a number of the hazards, or the hazards will be pointed out to you before they really begin to develop uh, to the point that you're extremely frustrated with the activity. There are a number of people that will help you uh, in the industrial development area. In terms of relying on the Department of Agriculture for funding uh, or the, eco the Economic Development Administration. These lines of funding have become extremely competitive and extremely narrow. And in some instances, as an example, a decade and a half ago, the, the, the Agricultural Department the, of the federal government would uh, help you finance the creation of a golf course and a country club. These are no longer eligible products uh, that they will support. So you've got to understand that, that type of thing that goes on. Somebody has suggested that there are 101 pages of material that you have, I'm sorry, 1,000, 1,100 pages of material you have to go through uh, before you can bring about certain types of uh, actions. I would suggest to you if you start with your town clerk and the vast majority, majority of the town and village clerks of Chautauqua County are up to date on what are the first steps that you have to take in order to do whatever you are interested in doing. Realize that if you are talking about going to any place in Chautauqua County where you want a million gallons of water a day and that million gallons of water will then go into the sewage treatment plant, that I do not believe that there are combined capacities of water and sewage plants uh, in, in a given municipality that can respond to that particular need. Uh, we're talking about modest development. We're talking about dealing with basically your town or village clerk or city clerk. The next step, you go to the county, to the health department, to the planning department, and from there on, you may be directed to the Corps of Engineers offices or the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. And in the vast majority of instances, that's the number of agencies that you have to deal with. Uh, when you build your building, you will have a building inspector that's going to see to it that your building is built to code. Realize that that's, that's a rather a recent uh, thing in New York State. I came from uh, Illinois, where I'd been in the planning field in the 1960s, and there was a statewide building code enforced uh, in the state of Illinois in, in the 60s. It isn't until the late 80s that we get a building code uh, being enforced on a statewide basis in New York State, uh, that you have to build to a certain minimum standard. You may build above the standard, but you can't build below the standard in terms of structural safety depending upon the type of use that you are going to create. But that's your responsibility 
uh, to meet those things. Your architect that you are dealing with should understand those things. If you're dealing with, with a large facility and you have your own engineer, your own engineer is probably licensed in the state of New York, he's going to be able to help you with whatever you're going to do. There is also some assistance in terms of planning in uh, a number of small individual ways that you can get assistance from uh, the Cooperative Extension System, which is a combined effort by the federal government, the state government, and the county government to give assistance to rural uh, New York State. Uh, they have, down at the Ag Center, at the airport outside of Jamestown, the agricultural uh, programs are all housed in a single building, and you can go there and receive tremendous amount of information on what you have to do, uh, or once you have a question of what you have to do, they can show you how to do it. They can show you how to, to site a home. As an example, do you realize that if you're building a home out in the country and you're going to have your own water and sewer system, that I think the first thing you ought to locate is not the building, but where is the best place to put your well, and then see to it that there's adequate distance between your well and downhill to your sewer system. Now site your house. Too many times we site our house, and then we say, oh, where are we going to put the well? In fact, in some instances, I've known of people that have built the house and then all of a sudden realize, hey, we've got to put in a well and a sewer system. And oh boy, did if we'd realized that this is all at the same time, we could have designed the house location, the well location, the sewer system location as a single system. Now we've got the house totally located here, and it dominates how we're going to create uh, the solution to the problem. That is some of the type of assistance that you, you can get from some of the pamphleteering that is available from the Cooperative Extension. Uh, there's a number of questions that you can ask Cooperative Extension, and they'll assist you with. Uh, and of course, just next door or down the street to Salamanca, you can go to the now regional office of the Farmers Home Administration and uh, look at what is available there in terms of loans. There are very few grant programs left anymore, but we can get less than market uh, price loans. So what is it that you are interested in doing? You want to preserve a swamp? Hey, we have about 6% of Chautauqua County that is designated as wetland, and a lot of that is swamp. A lot of it is also annual floodplain. Uh, maybe you'd like to do something like that in an exciting manner. Uh, there's some interesting things that you can do about that, and uh, what it is going to, uh, how you might affect your assessment by uh, various deeding away of certain of your development rights to a conservancy or that type of thing, and yet you can enjoy the swamp for the rest of your life and your children can also enjoy it. Uh, from a swamp to a ski slope, go to your town clerk. From a floodplain to an industrial park, start with your village or town or city clerk, and they'll tell you the direction to go. And nominally, there's only four or five steps that you have to be involved in to decide whether or not it's economically feasible for you to go on any further. And you don't have to spend a great amount of money in that process. All you have to do is, is get to the right organization and ask the right people. The right people, first of all, is, is the local municipal government. Then come up to the county government, to the county de department of planning, the department of development, the department of health. Check those three off. The department of Industrial Development, however, is an industrial development agency, and they are now have been, been very much restricted in, in the type of uh, development participation that they can be involved in. Uh, if it's in one of the cities, definitely. After you have talked with the village clerk, you go right to the development agency in the city. You don't go to the county planning department. Go to the development agency within the city and there's an expert there that is going to be able to uh, provide you with guidance. Uh, they may send you to the county planning department for uh, certain types of assistance. Realize what happens when you start to ask that local regulations be changed is that in the case of a zoning action, 
that is going to take place within 100 feet of a municipal boundary or a state or a county road, that zoning action is going to have to be referred to the county planning agency. And the local agency cannot take action until that referral has been responded to or the referral time has been exhausted and the county agency has not responded. However, I, I've never known us not to respond uh, within a timely manner. We, it used to be we, the new people that are there now. There are not large barrels of free grants left. I can remember a number of years ago, 1972 or 1973, having the regional director of the Economic Development Administration call me up and say, John, I'm in trouble. I'm coming to the end of the fiscal year, and I've got $3 million of 80% money. How much of it do you want, or would you like it all? And that meant that for every dollar, every $2 I put up, I got $8 from the federal government as a grant. And out of that type of a phone call, came the North Chautauqua County Industrial Park. That type of money is no longer available. Under the Economic Development Administration, they ran a water line from the east side of the village of Brockton all the way to the Pomfret Line as an effort at economic development. It was a total grant. It's not available anymore. That water line is there and in the ground, and by the way, it has not caused any dynamic economic development uh, in, the, in the town of uh, Portland and uh, the village of Brockton. The, there are, in some instances, training programs available. If you're going to come in and you're going to go into an existing building, um, we have a, a manpower program in, in Chautauqua County, housed down uh, in the city of Jamestown. PIC is its moniker. Uh, they can help you with training of persons. Uh, we have the Jamestown Community College, which also has a branch in uh, uh, Dunkirk, Fredonia now, that is available to help with manpower training. I'm sure that if there is enough of a need, uh, even the State University College at Fredonia would respond to it. Our BOCES programs also have training programs uh, that are available in case you are interested in training particular manpower. Uh, we can start in the, in the, in the uh, primary, not primary schools, but in the first 12 years to train up uh, for a particular skill or keep a particular skill uh, current with new people entering the field. This is also true with, with PIC and uh, with a marriage with the in Industrial Development Agency. So we have a lot of opportunities if you are interested in doing something exciting in Chautauqua County. But the place to start and not to get tripped up is the village, town, or city clerk. They will then develop, point you either to a county agency or to a city agency that can assist you in analyzing whether or not the dream that you have uh, can take place. Uh, it may be at the very start they'll tell you there's a community attitude against a particular activity, and that's the best advice that you can get. Uh, there is an opportunity. There is a challenge. I would suggest to you that from the time you decide that you want to do something until you can see it on the ground, uh, depending upon what it is, it's going to take you six months to several years. And it's there, and it's there in part to protect the environment of the community.